hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel we finally reached 1k subscriber and i would love to use this medium to appreciate each and every one of you thank you for the likes thank you for the comments i'm truly grateful to each of you in today's video i'm going to demonstrate how we can build a local mcp server by integrating it with langraph omama and streamlit so we're going to build a langraph agent which actually makes use of mcp tools so if you look at this diagram, um, let's look at the MCP server first. So we are creating three different local MCP server where we have the weather server, the SP tracker server, and the calendar server. So this MCP server is going to be communicating to the, with the MCP client. So whereby the client can request for access to tools from the server. And we're going to be building a solution on the Streamlit interface. So actually this project is to simulate an AI daily planner whereby you can gain access to your expenses, weather information, and events on your calendar. For this local MCP server, we actually got our data from the API and through database. So if you look at the weather server, we are getting our data from the weather API where we actually fetch real-time data about weather information. And the expense tracker server, I actually set up a local Postgres database whereby I created two different MCP tools where I have one tool for fetching data from a database and the other tool is for saving data back to the database. And the third server, which is the calendar server, we are using the calendar api as well where we can actually gain access to users events and every other information on their calendar so to set up the google calendar api this is a step-by-step -step process on how to connect to google cloud console and how you can actually get the credentials chasing which is what you need in order to communicate with the calendar api so now we're going to go to our code and i'm going to show you how we actually build the server and every other thing that it entails so this is our project directory. Um, we can see the planner, the .env file. So the .env file is um, all your keys. Like if you're using the OpenAI API key, you can have it in your .env file. So um, I'm going to click on the planner because this is where the main code actually resides. So um, let's click on the local servers. So we're going to look at the local server first, and I'm going to explain how we actually do these servers. So let's click on the calendar server first. We're going to import the library. And we're going to call the module whereby we create the name for our server. And if you look at everything that we have over here, we created a class for the calendar. So this is where we're going to connect to the API by using the credential JSON that we downloaded earlier, where it's going to now generate a token, which is what we're going to use subsequently to access the calendar. So, um, and the next thing is we also create the events. So this is where we actually create all our events. So with this, we can be able to list all the entire events that we have on our calendar. So um, after we've done that, so this is where we actually create the MCP tool and we're creating an instance of the class. So which is here and we're getting the events. So we are returning all the events that we have on our calendar. And just like I told you, we are building the local MCP server. So and we're going to be using the standard input, output, um, transport method. So which is um, what you can see here. So we're going to look at the next um, server. So uh, just like we did for calendar. So we also created a name, which is the SPS tracker server. And this is a connection to the Postgres SQL database. So we just created an impact function here to fetch and save data back to the database. And um, so this is where we also created our MCP tool. So we can see the at MCP tool. Um, so the first tool is for getting all expenses that we have inside our Postgres database. And this second tool is what we're using to save anything back to the database. For the SPS tracker server, we have two different MCP tool. And the one that we created earlier for the calendar server, we only created just one MCP tool for that. And here we're also using the transport method as standard inputs and output. So let's check the weather server. So for the weather server, we are retrieving the API key from the .env file. And we also created the name for the server. And um, yeah, so this is where we actually fetch the weather reports from the weather API. So this is where we fetch the entire weather reports. And over here, 
So this is where we actually create our MCP tool by calling the um, fetch weather report function, so which is over here. And so this means the user can send in the city name for which they want to check the weather information. And here we're also using the standard input output um, transport method. So now that is everything that we have on the local server. So we're going to go to the graph.py where we look at how we actually build the agents. So if you look at the code above, this is where we actually import all the entire library that we want to use. And remember, we're going to be using the launching MCP adapters. So this launching MCP adapter is what we use to convert MCP tool to launching tools. So, um, so just like I mentioned when I was explaining the architectural diagram, so I mentioned we're going to be using the Olama model. So by defining other different model here, so let's say you want to try out the GPT model, you want to use the Lama model or you want to use the Quorum model. So, but we're going to be using the Quorum model to demonstrate this particular project. So I'm going to comment this guys out. So we're going to be using the Quorum model. Um, so I'm going to define the system prompt, which is what I'm going to be passing to the prompt templates. So this is where we define the agent state. So this is basically how we can manage messages in our workflow. And here we're using the multi server MCP client to bring all the three different servers together since we are dealing with more than one server. So we're using this to create our clients. And um, we can see, like, from the clients, we actually did get tools. So after we brought these three different servers together, we can gain access to our tools from it. And this is where we create our chatbot node. So when we first create the chat prompt templates, we also bind the tools to the model whereby we create an assistant runnable, so which we can invoke with the user's message or anything that is sent. So now, after that, we create a state graph whereby we can add a node and hedges to it. So uh, we can see here we added the chatbot node, and we also added another node, which is the tool node. So whereby we're passing the tools through the tool node. And under the hedges, we also have the tool condition. So we're also using the tool condition, which is to return action if the chatbot needs to use a particular tool. And if it is not using any tool, it's meant to end the task. So uh, we have the conditional edges here. So it's either around to the chatbot node or the tool condition. So um, then we also do like we compile the workflow and we return the graph and the client. So this is everything that we have under the graph.py. So the next thing is we're going to move to this main.py where we have the streamlit code and I'm going to show you everything that we did over there. So um, under the main.py, we import the create agent function, so which is this function where we actually return the graph on the client. So we import it and over here we set the title and page title for our application. And here we define the session states. And under here we display existing messages. Like I'm able to see all my previous messages in one chart. And um, so this is where we take the user inputs. Um, this is where we actually write it back to the screen. So, and this is where we process the assistant response by using the results that we're taking from the graph.py. And we also output the results back as the assistant on this screen. So now we're going to run the code and we're going to see how this application actually looks like. So I'm going to come over here to the terminal. So we're going to activate our virtual environment. Then I'm going to do CD planner. I'm going to do stream it run in the PY. So this is the application interface, and I'm going to send you some question whereby I expect it to use the right MCP tools. So let me hack something like, um, what is the current weather in Lagos? Yeah, it might actually take some time because we're using a local model. So we can see like it actually used the get weather MCP tool. So, which is what it's used to answer this particular question. So, I'm going to go further to ask something there which is related to the other servers. So, I will say, can you get me all my expenses for this month? So, these are all my expenses for this month. 
auto. Yeah, so we can see like it has saved the data to database. So whether it's called the MCP to save uh, express to DB. So the last one is the calendar, and I'm going to say uh, list all my events of today. So let's see how that one goes. Yeah, so we can see it's actually called the get uh, calendar events MCP2. So, and it's retrieved the event I have on my calendar, which is a uh, meeting with Josh, which is the only event I have for today. So from everything that we have under here, we can see like it's actually pick up the right MCP2 to answer the user's question. So this is actually how you can build the LabGraph agent to use an MCP tool. So uh, if you have any questions, please drop them below. Also, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can see related videos like this. Thanks for watching. I would love to see you next time.